Welcome to Create Your Vibrant Life podcast. And today's episode is titled, This One Thing Can Bring You Massive Success. I'm actually going to give you a clue as to what it might be so that you can ponder upon that as we get started with this episode. I'm going to read you a quote from Wayne Dyer. If you have not heard of Wayne Dyer, he he's no longer on this planet and he used to be a um, spiritual teacher, for lack of a better word, and you can look him up, Wayne Dyer. So the quote goes like this, the state of your life is nothing more than a reflection of the state of of your mind. The state of your life is nothing more than a reflection of the state of your mind. So stay tuned, folks. Hello, visionaries. Welcome to Create Your Vibrant Life podcast, where you can create the life you desire by tapping into your inner wisdom. I'm your host, Padma Ali. I'm widely known in the field of psychology to create long-lasting transformation And now, I'm here to help you create the life you desire using a combination of neuropsychology and ancient healing practices. This podcast is for you, evolved, overachieving leader who's ready to unlock your highest potential. I'm here to guide you through a process of self-discovery to be the creator of your destiny. And you can do all of that by just taking aligned actions, tapping into the power of your brain, your inner wisdom and ancient practices. So stay tuned, folks. I am so delighted you are here. Welcome, visionaries. I am so excited you are here today to join me on this very, to me, this is a really this is one of the concepts that changed my life. Like I read you the quote in the beginning of this episode, your life is nothing but a reflection of the state of your mind. And when I first heard this concept many, 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 many years ago, I was actually very sick. If you have followed me for any length of time, you may have heard of my story of struggling with an autoimmune disorder for many years that left me bedridden for so long. But that was the beginning of my awakening process. And also, it was one of the most significant events in my life that changed the course of my life. So no matter how hard that suffering was at that time, I will not change that for anything because so many revelations came up from that. And one of the things was this concept of, it was a concept back then. Now it is how I live my life. That the concept at that time, when I heard it, I actually (laughs) had a reaction to it. I was triggered by it because in essence, what I heard back then, my interpretation was that if I was sick, if I was struggling, and if I was in pain, both mentally and physically, it was actually my fault is what I heard. And you know what? It was true. I caused every bit of it. Or let me put it this way. I was in agreement with every bit of how my life looked back then, and I am in agreement with every bit of how my life looks like right now. And what happened back then when I first heard it and my reaction was that I'm not doing this. This I was coming totally from a place of ego, refusing to look inside and see how was I contributing to how I was living my life back then. All I could see was, I did not choose this. I did not choose to suffer. I did not choose to be basically in bed in my 20s, where everyone around me, again, in my interpretation, was living their life, having fun, living a full life, having families and, you know, building their career and whatnot. And here I was stuck in bed, sick, could not even move. 
And so it didn't make sense to me of how I could have contributed to this. Now, I'm going to tie it all back to success as well, but I, but I want you to understand this from a place of your brain first. Your life is just a reflection of how you think and how you feel. And at that point, I was not in a place to hear that. And you may or may not be in a place to hear it, especially if you are struggling with things in your life. Whenever there's struggle, right? most people go into, I did not go, I did not want this, I didn't sign up for it. But you know what? You did. No matter where your life is right now, no matter what you're looking at, like look around you, look at your life, your health, your relationships, your wealth, your career, your ability to feel good, all of that. It's just a reflection of how you feel and you think. When you can really sink your teeth into this, it is extraordinarily powerful and it has the ability to completely transform your life because... You know, you may or may not realize that you have, you can have anything you want and you have put a ceiling on what you think you can have and what you think you cannot have. You know, so often in life, we put ourselves in a box. We don't know we are in a box and then we feel stuck in the box, but the box was created by you in the first place to get out of the box. The key to get out of the box is out of the box, (laughs) which means you need to get out of the box in order to get out of the box. That's the conundrum. That's the paradox that we all live in. But it is very, very powerful when you can truly understand and sink your teeth into this. And this is something I have done all my life. Okay. I, or, or, or let me back up. Whenever I used to struggle, whenever I used to have, whenever I felt dissatisfied with my life or things were not going the way I wanted them to go in the past, I used to feel like, why is this happening to me? Why am I, why, why am I here and not someone other people are surpassing me? In my mind, again, it used to be all interpretations. Now, how I see this is, What in me is being reflected in the outside world? Now, I want you to apply this to everything in your life. If you have a flat tire, if you suddenly got an extra, some money came into your life and you're like, wow, this is amazing. Or now you found the love of your life or you're struggling with your relationship. It's an opportunity to ask what in you is being reflected in the outside world because your external world is just a reflection of your internal state of mind. Your external world is a reflection of the state of your mind. So whatever you're seeing on the outside world, if you are struggling If your external world is reflecting struggle, then you are struggling on the inside. If your external world is reflecting peace and well-being, then that is what is being reflected from inside. So I'm really inviting you to sit with this because this is so key to creating anything you want. And I'm going to bring it back to success, but I want you to first start looking at this from this place of what in me is being reflected in the outside, because that is exactly what it is. Your life is just a mirror. You know, you may have heard the quote from Ernest Holmes in one of the episodes I talked about this, life is a mirror and will reflect back to the thinker what he thinks into it. Life is a mirror and it will reflect back to the thinker what he thinks into it. And that is it. When you can really truly understand that, you can have anything you want because then you're not limited by what is possible and what is not possible based on your world. Let me elaborate on that. See, we all have our own models of our world in our head based on your experience. 
right? Whatever experience you have, think about it as your little box. I have my own little box. You have your own little box. And we cannot think beyond that little model of our own existence and our own world. You know, when I was growing up, we moved out, we moved around a lot. My dad had a job which took us to different places pretty much every two to three years or four or five. I mean, I can't remember exactly the timeline, but we moved around quite a lot when, in my childhood. So in the process, it exposed me to different lifestyles, different people, different cultures. I grew up in India and every part of India is almost like a different country of its own. So we, I pretty much got to travel a lot when I was a kid. Now think about my existence versus someone who has never left their little town. Their, le- their experience is going to be different. I'm not saying it's better or worse, but it is what it is. This is what our model of our world is. If someone has never, ever, ever seen a pen in their life, they're never going to know what it does. Right? If you do not know what a pen is, then you are not going to know what to do with it. Right? And so I want you to start thinking about your life from that place. If you, your world is limited by what you know, and what you know is minuscule to what you compare to what you don't know. You know, just a few hundred years ago, they used to think there was only one galaxy or what, or, or there were no other galaxies. I don't know. But now scientists have discovered that we are such a tiny, tiny, tiny part of a large galaxy, right? But in that, at that time, there was a time in human history where they thought the world was flat. That was their model of reality. Till Newton came and said, I think it was Newton, if I know my physics or <laughs> my history correctly, that the world is round. But that was challenged because it's like, it really co- it clashed with the model of what other people knew. But the bottom line is what we know is so li- little, it's so little, it's limited. And if you continue to live from that place of limitation, you're only going to create limitations in your life. So if you've never made hundred dollars in your life, right? For you to think about millions is going to be out of reality in some ways for you. But if you have, if you're open to millions, if you, if you're open to the possibility of having millions in your life, then you will create that possibility to happen in you within, in your life. I'm using numbers, I'm using these examples because I want, it, I want to concretize this for you. If you, have, if you want a loving relationship and an intimate relationship and you have experienced some in the past, then you are much more likely to assume that you will find the, in quotes, love of your life. But if you only had say abusive relationships and it's never worked out. You're in, I I used to know somebody in my early, early years of my dating life where he could not sustain a relationship beyond six months. And that was it. So for him to fathom a relationship, a long-term relationship was probably not possible because he's never had a relationship beyond six months, right? But if he's open to that, then anything is possible. And that's what I'm, when I'm inviting you to look at. There's a reason I'm, I'm really harping on this because I want you to look at whatever you have or don't have is based on what you think you, you, you can have or you can't have, which means it, you, your external world is just reflecting what is happening on the inside. Now, you know, some of my clients, when I start working with them, they want, they have big desires, but they're not fully on board. They think it's not possible. They don't know how to get there. All those things is reflected in the external world and the universe is going to reflect back that it's possible, not possible. It's possible, not possible. I don't know how to get there. I know how to get there, right? That waffling is what is going to be reflected back. You know, anytime, I am not kidding you, anytime anything happens in my life, I am the first thing I ask. What in me is creating this? 
What in me is creating this to happen? What in me is choosing chaos? I, I've shared this before, like when we first moved into our home here in Sedona, like things started breaking down, like our washing machine stopped working, our dishwasher, like all kinds of random stuff started happening. And I was like, okay, what in me is choosing chaos? And as I would reflect on that and see, okay, what's happening there, then I also started looking at what am I choosing to create in this in this moment? And I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't find anything because I, I, I wasn't putting anything out there. And then I decided that things were just aligning in my home to match my energy and frequency and all, everything is energy. So even the washing machine and whatever have energy, right? And it was aligning to our energy versus the previous owner's energies. So I was like, okay, that's what's happening. And we moved on and now things have really started to settle. But that's the first place I go to. I start to explore where, so, if, so for example, I couldn't find my wallet the other day. And I was like, hmm, what is, I, I really took a minute to see, okay, where, I knew my wallet was inside the house. I knew I didn't leave it anywhere, but I had misplaced it somewhere where I couldn't remember. Again, I asked myself, what in me is creating this? What in me is choosing to forget where I left my wallet? What in me is being reflected back? And what was being reflected back was how busy my life was starting to get and how I was not paying attention to things. It was a like, wake up. What are you doing? And so it, it's just invitations to look inside and go, what in you is creating this? And then I just said, okay, all right, I'm going to shift. And then the external world catches up to that, your internal shift. So if you want to change something in your external life, start to change your internal stories, your narratives, your thoughts, your feelings, and then wait. What happens is that so many people will do this and then they'll be like, oh, it's not happening. They'll keep looking at their time and going like, oh, I changed my way of thinking. Why is it not happening right now? You have to give it time. You have to, whatever is happening to you right now has taken time to get there. When I was sick, it took years for me to get sick. And therefore, it was probably going to take me some time to get better as well. Now, it's not part of my identity anymore. I don't even think about illness. I don't even go there. It's not part of how I exist. So I am well and thriving. And of course, you know, my actions also reflect that I'm doing things to keep my body in and my mind in a better place as well. That's second part. But the first thing is how you feel and think is reflected in your external world. Okay, so now I want to bring in success because the podcast is titled, Do This One Thing, This One Thing Can Bring You Massive Success. Now let's look at success. Let me ask you this. What is success to you? Ponder on that. What does success mean to you? You know, the Webster definition of success is the fact of getting wealth, respect, or fame. That is what is success, according to the dictionary. Now, a very 3D way of thinking. When I say 3D, you'll hear me talk about 3D world and not the 3D world. 3D world is like the mundane existence. Like, you know, you're in your home, you're driving a car, you're eating food, you are raising kids. I'm not saying the kids are 3D uh, are mundane, but like it's, it's the act of doing things to keep you in, uh, in the physical world. It's like, you know, when you see kids in the 20s, they're like partying and going to bars and like, I don't know what's happening in the world right now, but that is very 3D existence, okay? So very 3D way of looking at success means 
For most people, it's like, go to college, get a degree, get a job, get a promotion, make sure you climb up the ladder, make sure you accumulate wealth and buy a house and have 3.5 kids and have a picket fence, fenced, white picket fenced house. Like that is living in the 3D world. And that is what many people define success as. You know, we used to live in the Bay Area in San Francisco, and that is what success was often defined by. You know, it's like, how much money do you have? How much, what is, do you have a startup company that you are, uh, that you are working on? Or are you working for a startup? Like it was, everything was based, success was defined by materialistic success. Okay. And then we move to Boston and that is a very intellectual success, right? What degree do you have? What PhD do you have? Like, where did you get your PhD from? Which college did you go to? That is what success many people define success by. And for me, that is a very 3D level of defining success. And, and please don't take me wrong. All of these things matter. It does matter. It's important. And if it's important for you, that's great. There's no judgment on that. It is what I am inviting you to do is go beyond the 3D. What is success for you specifically? If you didn't define success by all these 3D things, what would success mean to you? You know, I grew, I'm, I grew up very typical Asian, like, you know, you need to study, you need to go to a good college, you need to have a good job. Like this was exactly what, what I was, I was raised with. I like, I was a rebel even back then. I never worked for anybody. The only job I worked for someone was in graduate school where I worked in the post office. <laughs> I worked in the post office and that was the only job where I worked for someone else. Even my internships, I found a private practice internship. I've never worked for anyone. And it was always very baffling to my family. It's like, why do you not have a job? I'm like, I don't want to work for anyone. But even back then, I was always a rebel, right? And so maybe that rebellion suited me. Maybe it didn't. It doesn't matter. It's just a story for you. But the bottom line is, Define success based on what is success, what success means to you. And I have been there too. I used to define success by the money you have or by, you know, how much I was successful in my job. That was there, how I based my success on in the past. Not anymore. I used to, you know, when, before we had kids, I would be like, oh yeah, you know, they have to go to college and all that. Now I'm like, I don't care if they go to college. I honestly don't care. Like go to college, don't go to college. I really don't care. As long as you are living your life in alignment and living your life from a, from a place of service and kindness and love and, and also obviously valuing yourself. And so you need to find ways of valuing your, your value and bring in wealth as a result of that. But I no longer base success on all these 3D things. Success is based on what you think is success. And I'm really going to invite you to take some time to ponder on what does success mean to you? Are you coming from a place of service, love, care, contribution, or is success defined by fame or is it ego driven, right? And so start to ponder on those things and, and also start to think about what is driving that push for success. Is it to be, to get recognition in the outside world? Is it to feel very proud of you? Whatever it is, start to ponder on these things things. And guess what? You can have it all. When you are willing to look inwards and really look at you, you can have anything you want. Wealth, you can have it. Relationship, amazing relationships, you can have it. Health, you can have it. Whatever you desire is yours. Just notice what is pushing that and also Are you putting a ceiling on it without consciously or unconsciously? The question you need to ask yourself is, are you willing to suspend your model of the world? Are you willing to suspend that? Because if you continue to subscribe to your model of the world, you're only going to be, you're going to be limited by that. 
They want to allow you to grow and expand and evolve in ways that may, you may not even know possible. Are you willing to look and have more? And, and this is not just, you know, wealth is important. And we live a really, really comfortable life. And I like nice things. I like, you know, wealthy. And there, I'm going to do a whole series on money. It's really important because money, people don't talk about money. Money has all these interpretations and stories. It is good to have money because when you have wealth, you can do so much more in the world. Otherwise, you're going to be thinking about your basic survival. You can't contribute when you are focused on your basic survival total digressing, but I'm inviting you to start thinking like, what is success? Money does not define success to me anymore. And I have plenty, right? What drives, what is successful to me is can, how much contribution am I making to the world? How can I be of service even more? How can I evolve and help others evolve? That is how I base success in today's time. Was I like that before? No, not at all. But now at this point, this is where I have landed and it's a much freeing place. I'm not saying you need to be where I'm at, but find your path of success and find out what is driving that. Because the more you know yourself, the more you can create massive changes in your life and in others' lives. All right. So to be successful, you have to be willing to look into your own self at your thoughts, at your feelings. Focus on like if something is not working out in your external world, look at what are you thinking and feeling? Are you clear in what you want? Are you clear in your desires? And start to reflect on that. You know, one of my mentors, Jim, you've heard me talk about him. I, w- I will be doing some podcast episodes specifically on my own transformation. And w- you'll hear me talk about my mentor. He's now my friend too. I mean, we, we hang out and all that. So he says, as I receive, so I am projecting. As I receive, so I am projecting. So whatever you're receiving, that's what you're projecting out into the world. So what are you projecting into the world that you're receiving? So I am going to leave you with that thought. What are you projecting that you're receiving? And please, I'm really inviting you to consider this. You can have anything you want, anything. As long as you're in alignment with that thing, you can have it. And that means being very clear with your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions, because that's what your external world is reflecting back to you all the time. And when I really sunk in to this notion that I am in agreement with everything in my life, like I have agreed to all of this when I was so sick, I was in agreement with that. It was a big part of how I lived my life. When I struggled with parenting, I was very much in agreement with it. I just didn't see it. It took me some time to see it. But when I saw it, it was so freeing. It really changed things for me. And I want the same for you. I want you to have it all. I want you to really have whatever you want and fly in the sky if you need to. And But just start to look at yourself. Look in words because that's where the answers lie. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey. I so appreciate you. Thank you for your amazing, you know, thank you for sharing these episodes. Thank you because we've had an influx of downloads. Again, they don't mean a thing to me, but it just tells me that we're reaching more and more people and more and more people need information like this to elevate themselves. There's so much chaos in the world right now. So if you can do yourself and my, me a favor, please share these episodes. Please subscribe and also leave a review. It's going to help so many more people. Thank you so much. I am so grateful for you. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening. 
I have a request for you. If you found value, chances are that your friends and family will too. So if you can leave a positive review on iTunes, it will help reach so many more people. And if you have any topics or questions you would like me to feature, please send them to support at PadmaAli.com. And lastly, please share your takeaways and breakthroughs with me on Instagram at PadmaAli. Thank you so much for tuning in. 